Uh, so spleen chi deficiency is the next one. And again, this is super, super common, this in, especially in this clinic. Um, we have uh, poor appetite, fatigue, pale face, um, heaviness, weakness in the limbs. Um, loose stool is a kind of a hallmark sign with gas and bloating. Um, sweet cravings, sweet is the taste of the spleen. Um, and uh, again, that swollen tongue with teeth marks and a, a thick coat. Um, and uh, kind of diagnoses that are associated in, uh, for, um, in Western medicine are IBS, food allergies, and chronic digestive issues. Um, an example, 26-year-old female with poor sleep, daily headaches, lactose intolerance, loose stool, classic spleen G deficiency, um, and a 50-year-old female with fatigue, IBS, gas, and bloating. So what are we going to do for these? Um, so for acupuncture, I mentioned stomach 36, uh, and here's the stomach channel, and this is uh, stomach 36 right there. Um, spleen 6 is another good one, so on its uh, those are, you know, using those paired channels. Um, REN12, um, which is actually um, right above the, the belly button and um, is uh, anatomically actually located right above the stomach. Um, and then uh, another point, stomach 25, which is local to affect digestion. Those are fun points to, uh, um, to put, uh, usually when I, um, add those points, the, the stomach immediately starts grumbling and growling um, in, in response. Um, and I would also use uh, moxa uh, on these uh, patients. Some people are nodding their heads. Um, so moxa is uh, another type of uh, stimulation for the uh, meridians, um, not needles, but actually um, in the form of heat. So it's burning uh, the mugwort herb. Um, uh, over the points, um, and and traditionally acupuncture and moxibustion are literally the the it's the the characters of the medicine is uh, um, are the same. So nutrition wise, um, you know, just having a, a clean diet that's e you know easy to digest, uh, fresh local organic foods, um, sweet warm foods are your classic chi tonics. Um, which include like carrot squash. Um, we always call the, the, the worst kinds of foods, sadly, for the spleen are, are like ice cream. They're cold, dairy, um, and sweet. <laughs> so we, uh, I usually suggest that people um, you know, reduce those kinds of foods. So liver cheese stagnation is, uh, is, I would say, the most common um, diagnosis in the United States. Um, it's anything that is worse with stress or emotions, um, symptoms that tend to get better with exercise. Um, depression is characterized by liver chi stagnation. Um, irritability, pain, sighing is a sign of that stagnation. Uh, plum pit chi, which is the feeling that there's something stuck in your throat. Um, a PMS, uh, a, a wiry pulse is the quality of the pulse. And the liver can overact, you know, talking about that five elements, it can overact on one of the other lungs, I'm sorry, one of the other organs, including the lung, um, spleen and stomach. So, um, so if somebody's really under stress um, and, and their like asthma kicks in, um, that's the liver overacting on the lung. If, if somebody gets really nervous and um, has digestive issues, that's the liver overacting on the stomach. And so that's IBS, asthma, GERD, um, and depending on the situation. So uh, examples, 38-year-old male with acid reflux, neck and shoulder pain, high stress, um, a 26-year-old female with pen painful, heavy periods, PMS, symptoms, miscarriage, a lot of um, uh, women's health issues uh, involve the liver. So this is kind of interesting. Um, uh, the, you know, the 12 meridians are associated with the clock as well. Each organ has a two-hour period during the day. 
the liver time is between 1 and 3 a.m. And if you're somebody that tends to wake up at the same time uh, during the night, likely it's between 1 and 3 a.m. And that is the liver time, it is a liver cheese stagnation. Um, so you might want to pay attention in the next <laughs> slide. So liver cheese stagnation is, is one of those that um, is fairly easy to treat because it's it's just about movement if something is stuck move it right sometimes it's it's a little bit simplistic but um, but that's the idea in Chinese medicine and and acupuncture if it's good at one thing it's moving chi um, there's uh, two points uh, on the body uh, large intestine four and liver three which um, are basically at the at the webbing of the hand um, and the same location on the foot. And those are called the four gates. And you put needles in those four spots and th things just start to, to move. Um, the, um, you know, many of you may know um, that uh, Dr. Gary is really focused on this overlap between um, chronic pain and depression. And um, from a Chinese medicine standpoint, um, pain is, um, is chi that's not moving and depression is the same thing it's chi that's not moving and and those are manifest either physically or emotionally um, so the um, it's a, a novel concept in in western medicine um, but it's it's pretty much a textbook uh, liver chi stagnation um, also cupping can be really good for um, uh, for this kind of uh, pain uh, patterns, um, lifestyle changes, anything that's going to get you to relax, um, the you know whether it's inc an, an increasing physical activity, doing breathing exercises, meditation. Um, this is where massage and body work is really helpful, um, and doing in sleep hygiene. So those times, if you do wake up in the middle of the night, um, you know, trying to get back to sleep as soon as possible. Um, and uh, nutrition, avoiding overeating, um, using pungent foods and reducing stimulants, fried foods, um, alcohol, drugs uh, are all very taxing on the liver, uh, Western and Chinese. So you're not saying avoid pungent foods? Pungent foods are very good, yeah, absolutely. Garlic, um, yeah, all very good for the, the liver. The last one that I'm going to mention today is uh, kidney yin deficiency. Um, and remember, kidney is responsible for growth and development. It's uh, you know storing that essence, um, aging related. Um, somebody who's kidney yin deficient will have lower back. The the hallmark signs for kidney deficiency is lower back and knee pain. Um, also tinnitus, you know, ringing of the ears, dizziness, um, and then um, the yin deficiency patterns are um, a smaller body size, um, constipation, thirst. Um, night sweats, insomnia, but this insomnia pattern is people that can fall asleep really easily, but they can't stay asleep, so they tend to sleep really lightly throughout the night and wake up uh, very easily. Um, also, because of the reproductive issues, um, the kidney indeficiency is vaginal dryness or premature ejaculation. Examples, 62-year-old male with arthritis in his right hand, wrist, elbow, and knees. Um, pain worse in cold, damp weather, uh, borderline hypertension, and difficulty staying asleep. And then a 55-year-old female with hot flashes, night sweats, uh, irritability, constipation. Um, this is uh, a lot of menopause uh, symptoms are, are kidney yin deficiency. And uh, the acupuncture points for um, kidney yin deficiency, a lot of them are around the ankles. So um, kidney three um, is, uh, is a really great point. Um, spleen six is at the ankle. Um, there's also points associated with each of the organ on the back. So even if you're not face up, um, you know, we can still uh, you know, access those, these different points uh, on, on the back. Um, and I would do, you know, in the case of, of the gentleman with arthritis, I would do a lot of local needling for, for his pain. 
um, lifestyle, meditation, qigong. The Chinese are really big on limiting sexual activities um, to retain, you know, and sto store that essence. Nutrition, a lot of uh, water moistening foods um, are really great, yin tonics, um, and uh, again, the, the Chinese, the, the medicine. Um, ginseng, you know, is a, a common herb. We hear about it a lot. Um, although to get the really, you know, um, good ginseng, it, it's actually quite expensive. And um, it's a, we're actually taught that um, to not use ginseng until later in life because um, it's really powerful but um, it doesn't last long so you want to maximize when you're going to use it um, the ginseng but this is for kidney yin deficiency this is the time to use it okay so um, t to conclude you know I've, I've thrown a lot at you um, a lot of terms a lot of ideas and um, but you can see that um, Chinese medicine really offers a completely different perspective. Um, it's, it's literally a different body that we're looking at. And um, with that different perspective, I think that there's some really great opportunities um, it, to be able to um, uh, basically expand on, on what we don't know in Western medicine. So especially you know pain management, chronic conditions, um, you know, areas that right now the best uh, solutions we have are, are, are pharmaceuticals um, and some of them that have pretty nasty side effects. And so if you can use something like this um, that doesn't have quite the side effects, um, you know, I, I think it's, it's pretty powerful. Um, also Chinese medicine is preventative, it's palliative. I, we can meet you wherever you are, whether you know, you're just starting to notice that you're sick or um, you know, side effects from medications or chemotherapy. Um, it really has a, a wide use. Um, challenges as far as integration, um, terminology. You can see the, the stuff that I'm talking about is a little wacko, right? And believe it or not, if an ac another acupuncturist were giving this talk, they would use probably e different terms, maybe even the same ones in different ways. So even in the field, we don't have a consistent language that we use. Um, and so that's a big <coughs> challenge uh, in terms of the variety of styles and providers. Um, but at, that's also the beauty of it, is that um, because it is a, an older tradition, it's, it's evolved in a lot of different ways. Um, and uh, again, you know, the, the, the field is kind of divided about whether to use the, the really traditional models um, or to, to modernize them and, and really just have them be anatomy based. Um, and, and there's both schools that are, um, that are thriving. But uh, these are, you know, the challenges to integrating um, the, uh, the medicine. Great, well, thank you guys so much for coming. And I hope you enjoyed. Thank <laughs> you.